Next up is Kate Van Buskirk, Instagram handle K8VBeast because she is one. One of only five Canadian women to crack the 15 minute barrier in the 5,000 meters. But she's not just an Olympian, she's also a track and field broadcaster who thinks a lot about how to market this sport. She hosts and produces the ShakeOut podcast at Canadian Running and took a few minutes to talk with us. Kate, thanks for making the time to be with us. Look, here's my first question. You and I can go to Scotiabank Arena, watch the Raptors play. The people in that stadium know they can't make a three-point shot, but they're allowed to be basketball fans anyway. But like with track and field, once you express like a real interest in the sport, people want to know like where you ran in university. So my question is like, how do you start to um, chip away and get rid of the perception that you have to be a high-level athlete in order to even enjoy this sport as a fan? It's such a good question. First of all, hello. Thank you for having me on. This is great. It's a real pleasure. Lovely seeing you. Um, such, such a good question. And you know what? I think it's really complex. It's interesting because it's something I've thought a lot about throughout uh, you know, my very lengthy career now. And I think that it's so fascinating to me because like track and field and running have some of the lowest barriers to entry, mm -hmm. right? So to your point about like why are fans are expected to come from the sport, I think because many of them do, right? Like almost all of us grew up with track and field days in elementary school. We probably, you know, joined the track or cross country team for at least a season in high school because, you know, there's often no cutoffs. It's like almost everyone makes it. Yeah. And then as adults, you know, there's like almost everyone at least runs recreationally or you know, can sign up for a 5K road race or, you know, train for something like that. So I think logically it makes sense that our fan base would be really robust because of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is really relatable that way, but it takes away, it strips down one level of the sort of superstar versus everyday person. Yes. And I just can't but help think that maybe that's contributing a little bit to this because like, it's just running. So Kate, you've run all over the world, North America, Europe, Asia, outside of North America, what do track and field meet promoters do right? That's such a great question because I think that we don't look to those models as much as we could or should. So one of my favorite places to race is in Europe. Like when I'm racing in Belgium, they love their track and field. Mm -hmm. Germany, France, like those countries, the Netherlands, they have such a, an appreciation for it, but they also turn out in droves. Like you'll sell out these stadiums. And I think that it comes down to a couple key things. First of all, Europe has, you know, a strong history of appreciation of track and field, but so, so does and should most of the world. Right now, the tickets to the Paris Diamond League, the cheap seats are 20 euros. So imagine just handing over 20 bucks to go see the best athletes in the world compete. It's a tight time window, right? So those meets will go two and a half hours total. You can buy a beer and sit in the stands, <laughs> right? Like you can just make it an afternoon the way you would if you went to a Jays game, except it's, it's even shorter. I don't want to rag too much on them because I think they do the best they can with limited resources. But mm -hmm. speaking from a Canadian perspective, our Canadian track meets are sometimes, you know, seven hours long right. and it's not that tight a window. There's a lot of downtime between events. Um, people get, you know, our attention spans are short. We've got other forms of entertainment to contend with. Right. And there's not maybe also the education piece too. Um, AC did a great rebranding recently and they did, uh, they have this fantastic commercial that you might've seen where Andre de Grasse is, is sprinting and he's racing at a streetcar. Yes. Right. And Alicia Newman is pole vaulting and they literally superimpose stacked cars. Yes. With the height that she's vaulting to give you like a real, oh my gosh, that's how many car heights that she actually clears when she gets over a, a, a vault. And so stuff like that is great, but we need to do more of that. We need to bring people in and make them feel part of it. So a big question for me and probably for you is, how does this sport bring in new fans without alienating the old ones? I never want to dismiss the importance or the voices of the diehard longstanding fans, right? Because we need them and, and they deserve to have their needs met. They've been with us through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that we're probably not going to lose too many of them by implementing some of these changes to help attract a, a younger or newer or more modern audience. Um, and I think, you know, there have been a couple smaller examples of, again, just giving different visibility. Mm -hmm. So at the NACAC championships in Toronto in 2018, yep. they held the pole vault in Nathan Phillips Square in front of City Hall. And what happens then is anyone walking by, like they laid down track runway, they put the mats there. It was a beautiful sunny day. They pumped it up on social media. And so anyone who's walking around in the middle of the summer in downtown Toronto really has no choice but to walk by and be compelled by these unbelievable athletes 
literally hoisting themselves in the air and they just want to know what's going on. What is this? Right. There's got to be ways of exposing to the mm -hmm. public what our sport is all about. The other thing that needs to happen is you need a different kind of league system where you actually have consistency of the same athletes competing against each other over and over again throughout the season. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that right now. We have the Diamond League, yep. but that's not really a league. That's a league of races. Yes. But there's no clear system about how you get into those races. Often there's like five or six high level track meets happening in a 10 day space. So athletes end up ducking each other so that they can either get more prize money at one place or the other, or they don't want to potentially lose a head to head competition against an opponent that they're mm -hmm. going to be showing up at the you know Olympic start line with. That's no good for our sport base either, because how do you get any consistency in storylines? How do you create like strong rivalries? Yep. Pro sports do this so well. So I think we need a league system where you see the same athletes competing at the same meets. It Maybe they sit in the top 10 and then they get knocked down a peg, but everyone knows who those top 10 mm -hmm. are. You know, this was a, a suggestion that was proposed by Evan Dunphy, um, who just has some great ideas about this. And he was like, why is it that if you know the right agent and your agent knows the right meet director, you can get a start line at a Diamond League race just because you know the right people? Mm -hmm. So, okay, we see this in a lot of sports where that are traditionally men and where the women's side is starting to grow. You see it in basketball, you see it in fight sports like boxing, mixed martial arts. Uh, the challenge that goes with convincing the audience that the women are worth watching. And from a competitive standpoint, boxing and mixed martial arts, these are still new sports. So the talent pool is still filling in. Uh, but track and field has always been co-ed. Co it's always had men, always had women. How big of a built-in advantage in terms of marketing the sport is the fact that the sport has always been co-ed? I think it's a huge advantage. And I will say one one of the many things that we have going for us, although you know we also chase, face our challenges, is that I would say there is probably more gender equity and parity in track and field than almost any other sport I can think right. of. So it's mandated by World Athletics, by the Diamond League, by whomever, that if you're gonna put on a sanctioned meet, you have to have equal prize money for men and women, right? You have to have equal exposure. I think it also, you know, in terms of building the fan base, women are traditionally a huge untapped audience mm -hmm. for sports. Um, and I think that, you know, we're starting to see women get contracts that are more than, than our men. So there's yes. something there, which is awesome. And how much do you think overhauling the business of the sport would help strengthen the product? So Mr. Aaron Brown has written a fabulous piece for you guys at CBC for Players Own Voice uh, earlier this year. Suggest everyone go check it out. And he t talks about this a lot. And his take is that the rising tide lifts all boats. So when athletes are undervalued or not marketing themselves or being marketed in a way that is effective for them as individuals, it hurts the entirety of the sport. I think that our sport makes far less money as a whole than it could or should. And I think that that will, increasing that will increase revenue for sponsors. It'll help NSOs, it'll help world athletics, it'll help the athletes, right? So I think that there's a cascading effect here where we've gotten very used to, again, kind of being, oh, we're track and field, we're an Olympic sport, once every four years we're on display and then no one kind of pays attention. Why aren't we doing a better job of that marketing? Why aren't we creating that league system? Why aren't we creating rivalries? Mm -hmm. We got to come together. We got to have some kind of collective bargaining or players union or something so that we can start advocating for this stuff ourselves. And, but then pitch it to the higher ups in a way that says, Hey, you're going to make more money too. The yep. sport's going to be healthier. It's going to be more successful. It's going to have more longevity. Um, Cause right now these divisions are just hurting us.